dash artery is the largest branch of brachial artery think about this So here you seeing in this image is the brachial artery and its branches. Axillary artery and brachial artery are same artery. Means axillary continues as brachial artery after crossing the lower border of teres major muscle. The name gets changed. The axillary artery is now called as brachial artery. Okay, now we talk about brachial artery. So just after its commencement, it soon gives its largest and the longest branch and that is called profunda brachial artery. So this profunda brachial artery, it winds behind the mid shaft of humerus running in this radial groove along with the radial nerve and along with its two vena comitantes. Then it emerges on the lateral side of the arm where it soon divides into its two terminal divisions. The anterior descending branch, it perforates the lateral intermuscular septum to enter into the front of arm in the lower half and this anterior and descending branch of profunda brachial artery will anastomose with the radial recurrent artery which is a branch from the radial artery. Then its posterior descending branch which continues into the back of arm will anastomose down below here you can see it anastomoses down below with the interosseous recurrent artery which is a branch of posterior interosseous artery behind to the lateral epicondyle. However, this brachial artery continues on the medial side of the arm and at the mid shaft you can see there is another important point that this is the nutrient artery. So the nutrient artery to humerus is a direct branch from brachial artery and you can see that its course is directed downwards towards the condylar end or the distal end of humerus. Why? Because you know the upper end, the head end of the humerus is the growing end and the direction of nutritional foramen is opposite to the growing end. So don't confuse because Nutritional artery is not a branch from profunda brachial artery. It may be an occasional incident, but generally nutritional artery to humerus is a branch from brachial artery. Now this brachial artery, it also gives its branch here at the mid shaft on the medial side and that is called superior ulnar collateral artery which runs behind the medial intermuscular septum in the posterior compartment in the lower half of the arm and down below it anastomoses with the posterior ulnar recurrent artery which is a branch from ulnar artery and this anastomosis happens behind the medial epicondyle of humerus. Then at the level of supracondylar area, brachial artery again gives its branch called supratrochlear artery which splits into two branches, one communicates with the superior ulnar collateral and the other which descends down is called the inferior ulnar collateral artery. Now this inferior ulnar collateral artery anastomoses with the anterior ulnar recurrent artery which also is a branch from ulnar artery. So within the same question you have also learned the anastomosis around the elbow. So there are four anastomoses being happening on anterior and posterior surfaces of the medial and lateral epicondyles. Two branches contributing from above on the medial side are branches from brachial artery. Two branches contributing from above on the lateral side are branches from the profunda brachial artery. Two branches contributing from below on the medial side are branches from ulnar artery and two branches contributing from below on the lateral side are from 
different arteries. The radial recurrent artery, which ascends anterior to the lateral epicondyle, is a branch from radial artery. However, the interosseous recurrent artery, which ascends behind to the lateral epicondyle, is a branch from posterior interosseous artery. This also is a very important point. So the answer here will be Profunda brachial artery is the largest branch of brachial artery.